Hello, and thank you for testing out some environmental finance. I'm Tanya Bromley, and I'm here with my friend, Michelle DeHaven. Say hi, Michelle. Hello, everybody. And what we do every day is actually work with communities to help them figure out how to keep their communities, the environments within their communities, you know, the trees, the air, the water, the soil, all those different things, healthy and safe so that the community can enjoy them. And, you know, when we have clean air, clean water, clean lands, we all live in a better community and a better place. And we can do really great things at school, at work, and at home and at play. What we're going to do today is help you through a little activity to help you understand a little bit more about what environmental finance means. So, welcome to STEM Town. STEM Town is our city for today. We're going to make some very important decisions about what we, how we can pay for all of the different services in our community. So first, I need you all to pause this presentation and go get 15 of something at, in your house. It doesn't matter what it is, something small that you can put on your blank sheets of paper. So you need 15 somethings, whether that's crowns, candy from Halloween, maybe it's pennies or nickels or dimes that doesn't even all have to match. It can be three pieces of candy, two coins, six crowns, whatever it is. Um, so get 15 of something. And then you also need two blank sheets of paper that you can draw on or write on. Okay, I'll let you go do that. All right, thanks for coming back. Now that you have your 15 somethings, you're gonna take your pencil or pen or whatever marker, or whatever you've got and draw this grid on your page. So turn your page sideways and do a big box and then do eight more boxes, four on top, four on the bottom. All right, now that you're done with that part, we're gonna put a label in each box. So um, as you just pause this slide and write down the and label each box. And it doesn't have to look just like mine. You can write it in big letters, you can draw pictures, whatever you wanna do inside each box and have them labeled exactly this way. So congratulations on your new job as the budget officer for STEMTOWN. You have a big responsibility. You have to ensure that STEMTOWN departments have all of the money that they need to operate at their best. So like all cities, Stemtown gets its money through taxes, which is the money that people who live in the city pay. This tax money is something that we all provide so that we can have the things that we really enjoy in our city. So the 15 somethings that you, that you got represents tax dollars. It's Stemtown's tax money. And take a few minutes to put all of Stemtown's dollars, your 15 somethings, into the departments that you put on your grid. All right, so basically what you just did with your somethings was you budgeted your tax dollars into each department. And that's exactly what a budget officer does in a community. If they accept, instead of somethings, they use money and it's usually a lot of spreadsheets and um, calculations. So on your budget that you did with your somethings on your paper for each department, what are the three departments that got the most tax dollars, they're the most somethings. So maybe you put, you know, four somethings on the animal shelter, but only two somethings on electricity because you didn't want to spend as much money on electricity. That's fine. Let's just see where, what, what your priorities were by how you spent your money. So on your other sheet of paper, write down your top three priorities. What departments rose to the top? All right, now that you have your priorities listed, what if I told you that each department needs at least two somethings on the budget in order to function at the best level? Did all of your departments make it? Did all of your departments have everything that they needed to supply their workers with salaries, with their, um, make sure the workers had enough protective equipment? Maybe they need gloves and hard hats, or maybe they need specialized um, equipment to, you know, clean the drinking water or take care of the animals. You know, did every did you fully fund each of your departments? And then do you need to change things around so that each department is fully funded? 
So now that you've kind of started a little bit, let's take a look at all of STEM Town's departments and see what it is that they do with these tax dollars. Maybe you've been to your local animal shelter, maybe you haven't, maybe you've adopted a pet from an animal shelter. Animal shelters within communities take in stray animals, they safely care for them, feed them, give them shots. Um, this is sometimes also the department that if you find an animal out in the um, out in your community that you you know that stray or, or sick or injured, these folks will go out and rescue those animals. So that animal shelter, they use that money to pay for animal keepers, the great work that they do feeding and caring and the veterinary care for those animals. All sorts of animals, not just dogs and cats. We've got snakes and birds and rabbits and chickens and all sorts of stuff. The drinking water department uses a lot of different complex processes to make sure that the water that you drink, that you take a shower in, that you cook with is clean and safe. So our water in various places comes from aquifers down underground or from rivers or streams or reservoirs. And the drinking water department takes that water in and cleans it all up, takes out all the dirt and bacteria and then sends it to your home in order to make sure that you're not ingesting all that gross stuff. The money that they have from tax dollars goes to pay for the equipment and for the water operators and all the people who work to make sure that the drinking water facility is running properly. All right, and the electricity, if you, everyone, we all are using electricity to uh, power this session. We all use it every day. The electric department makes sure that the electric poles are safe, that we have enough of them to get electricity to all the homes in our community. Um, you have enough electricity and regular reliable electricity to run your air conditioner, your television, your washer dryer, and have that electricity to charge our cell phones and tablets and headphones. Stemtown's Parks and Pools Department ensures that all of our city parks and playgrounds and pools are maintained and clean and safe. The park that's closest to your home may ha might have playground equipment. The parks department makes sure that it's clean and that it's safe for kids to play on. It also takes care of the maintenance at parks and walking trails and makes sure that your public pool is meeting all the safety standards it needs to. These parks and pools also has different types of equipment for running and sports such as basketball or or other or soccer or other activities that you can go to and enjoy being outside. All right, you probably don't think about stormwater very often, but there are a number of people that work for your community that do. And stormwater is the rainwater that falls on the ground that doesn't get soaked in by the grass in your yard or the field behind your house. Um, all of the water that falls on those hard surfaces, your roof, your driveway, your uh, sidewalks and roads, that has to go somewhere. And so it gets funneled. A lot of times it goes through down the gutters in your street, or maybe you have a ditch um, that the water runs down. What you see here in this picture is a storm drain and the water goes in there. And that storm drain usually goes out to the nearest um, river or stream. And the thing that is most important about stormwater and the people who work in storm in the stormwater department's job is to help prevent flooding. If we didn't have these stormwater infrastructure or all those gutters and um, storm drains and pipes that lead that water away from our buildings and our homes, uh, we would have a lot of a lot of flooding, and our houses would be, always be at risk of um, getting wet every time we are you know coming underwater every time we have a rainstorm. So or even snowstorm when it melts. So stormwater is really important and we don't think about it very often. Something we do think about often are our streets. So the street repair team in Stemtown make sure that all of our streets are in tip top shape. They look at our, our streets that go right in front of our house, the main roads that are through town and make sure that the, the cracks and potholes are repaired they also work to build new roads as the town gets bigger. So the money that's given to the street department helps with our community's growth and making sure that we can drive to the places that we need to drive safely. All right, well, you all know the importance of trash management in our communities. 
one of the, um, I think the most important thing that the city can do is help us remove our trash. Uh, every day I create trash, whether it's food scraps or uh, you know, maybe it's a, a bottle or a can that I use from cooking, or maybe it's a Kleenex I throw away. You know, we've got to manage all that trash and I don't want it piling up in my house. So what we do is we have the trash service that comes and picks up trash and takes it away to the landfill. But we also have recycling because we don't want all of our trash to go to the landfill. So we also, in many communities, have recycling as well. And we can separate our trash from our recycling and have that taken away. And that recycling can get turned into new products um, instead of just going and sitting in a landfill for hundreds of years. The wastewater treatment department is kind of the one that people don't like to talk about so much. It's the one that keep, cleans out our gross water to make sure that the streams and other waterways around our communities aren't polluted. So when you go to the bathroom or things like that, that goes through a different pipe to a different treatment plant where they clean it all up and then put it back into the waterways um, so that it's not polluting. Some companies even reuse that water for other purposes, not for drinking water, but for other purposes, such as irrigation or things like that. All right, now that you know a little bit more about each of these departments, are you gonna rebudget or change around um, how you divide up the money or the some things on your sheet? Push, push pause and, and see and rearrange it a little bit to how you think the budget should look now that you know a little bit more about each department. So now that you've budgeted again, were things a little bit different this time? Did you put more money into different uh, into different departments, or did you keep it the same? Uh oh, you knew it couldn't last forever. Dun dun dun. There's always going to be budget cuts. A city's budget can be reduced for many different reasons. Right now, there's a lot of um, discussion in cities about the impacts of COVID-19 and how this pandemic um, might reduce the tax dollars that the city gets because there's less people eating out at restaurants or you know, some people might be moving out of town or those sorts of things. So, those, so things like that can reduce a budget. Um, a big company that leaves town can cause a city's budget to be reduced as well. But in Stimtown, our budget cut will be because of a flood. Torrential rains came and flooded our community and it hurt our local businesses, our homes, our parks, our whole community. Some people had to move away because their homes were destroyed. Some businesses closed because their building was destroyed or they just couldn't stay open. So Stemtown has to use a lot of its tax dollars to clean up and rebuild, which means that's going to be less money for all of the departments that we've been funding. So now you've got to take five somethings away from your budget. All right. So now with only 10 somethings, so rebudget and pause the slides and reallocate or re rebudget your um, somethings onto your card. You're going to have less money. Likely not all of your departments will be fully funded. Remember, each department needs two somethings to be fully funded. So pause the video and and budget again. So how did things work out for you this time? How did your budget change? Since each department needed two somethings in order to function at its best, you didn't have enough money to give each department two somethings. What were your priorities this time? And how did those priorities change after the flood happened? All right, there's always good news. So the good news is that there is some federal dollars coming to the rescue. So our federal government has programs that go, come in and help communities after emergencies. So after our STEM town flood, the federal government came in and they gave us some, some dollars uh, to pay for things like rebuilding, cleaning up the flood, drying out those homes and, and businesses and rebuilding and, and renovating those so that they were back to new again because of this extra money coming into the community, we're gonna give STEM Town's budget eight more somethings. So add eight somethings to your stash. And now your budget is increased. You now have 18 somethings. 
which is more than enough to be able to fully fund all of our departments and help with the cleanup and rebuild after our flood. So everybody gets enough to be able to, to function at their best and we can still clean up after our natural disaster. So what do you think STEMtown will be able to do with all of these fully funded departments? Maybe some new environmental projects like solar panels for City Hall, or maybe something big like a new water treatment plant, or maybe some new playground equipment, or even new parks and trails that can help with community health. So think about all the departments that we're funding and what kind of cool new projects that they might be able to do with this extra money. All right, so that is environmental finance in a nutshell. Environmental finance is how we prioritize and pay for the things that keep us safe and healthy in our communities. It's not an easy job. It's tough for decision makers and the staff members who work on the budget every year to figure out what departments get how much money so that they can do their jobs to the best of their abilities. Um, it's often essential when giving tax dollars to public services that we really try to keep the public health and safety in mind and upfront. There are hardworking people that work every day to keep us safe and healthy. So it kind of makes me happy when I'm paying taxes a little bit, because I know they're going right back into our community and doing some great stuff. Michelle, thank you so much for playing this game with me today and, and teaching everyone about environmental finance. I had a great time. I had a wonderful time, too. What a, what a fun exercise. All right. So go out there and see what you can find in your community that is being paid for by um, environmental finance.